All right, so what we've got here, this is the power steering pump that was actually on the Cummins 4BT. Um, this is actually a uh, GM replacement pump um, that will go on the, uh, actually the van that I got the brake booster off of, which is a 3500 uh, series van. That's what this pump, that's what that vehicle had on it. And then also some of the uh, Chevrolet trucks have on the diesels, the 6.5 had this pump on it. This pump here is the one that actually come off of the Chevrolet 350. And this is what we're going to swap over to uh, put back on the 4BT. I was going to keep this one, um, but I think just to make it a little bit easier and simpler, we're going to go ahead and use this. Uh, this here's got a built-in reservoir versus this one here does not. This pump right here has this reservoir, which you have to mount up higher and then it'll feed the pump and then also your power steering and also your brake booster so we're going to do away with that so first thing you have to do is take your puller get you some bolts um, they are a metric thread on this gear they are metric thread um, basically put this on takes a couple bolts run them through tighten this up and it'll go ahead and pull this gear off now what i did is i just marked it out that way I wouldn't forget which way that went to because uh, we're not, we've kind of been doing this in separate days. So something to keep in mind is <clears throat> you need to measure where this gear is sitting down on the shaft. Um, I basically took a small uh, measuring ruler and measured from here to the top of the gear when it was sitting on here. And it was a, from this flat face here to the top of the gear was an inch and one eighth. So keep that in mind. And also I took this measuring device just to make sure when this gear was on here, I just stuck this down in there to measure the depth of the shaft where it was sitting under the gear. Then that way I've got two measurements just to make sure when I put it back together that everything's taken care of. So we pulled the gear off. Next thing you've got is you've got some uh, uh, bolts that are located in here. Um, you take those loose, this comes off. So here's, here's the old pump and now the new pump is going to be going back in place. Uh, all the bolt holes are identical. In the inside here you do have a little cork uh, gasket. It's kind of like a slinger really. Um, the shaft goes around there. I think if this seal goes bad it'll actually, uh, it fits tight in there and it'll, it'll weep to the outside instead of weeping to the inside, inside the uh, crankcase itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, this bolted on, we're going to press our gear on, and how we're going to press our gear on is basically the same GM uh, special tool that you're going to use on this style pump that had the pulley here. This is this is that special gear or the the hub puller which is the power steering pump pulley kit. This will pull off the, the gas engine uh, pulley. Then this one here is going to basically going to help reinstall the uh, the gear. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on here. Inside the shaft here is uh, threaded. Uh, we're going to take this device right here. When this gear is on there, we're going to screw that down in there like so. Then we're going to put you a, a wrench on here and you're going to screw this. And what that's going to do, this is going to press that gear right down on that shaft. And then basically it's ready to uh, reinstall. What we did is we went ahead and pressed this uh, gear on. Uh, something to keep in point uh, in mind is the fact that this, the pump itself, the shaft, has a little bit of clearance where the shaft in play goes in and out. When you go ahead and press this on, uh, before you put it in the truck, make sure that you push in on this gear and spin this. Um, what we did is we tightened it down a little bit too much and the gear was touching the back of this aluminum housing just to the fact that the shaft in play. So make sure you guys check that and um, it sets about inch and an eighth uh, to almost in between inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter, really close. But uh, anyhow, you want to double check that before you put it in. All right, so we got the uh, power steering pump mounted in and uh, it is hooked up. We went ahead and got uh, new power steering and slash brake booster lines 
put in. Um, here's the return coming off the brake booster. You've got your supply line coming in and then this is the uh, discharge side of the uh, power booster. This line here goes down to the steering gear box for your power steering. Uh, this here is the return. So this line and this line, this is the return off of the hydro boost. This is the return line off of the steering gear box. We're going to put a T right here and that T is going to go in and uh, come to the back side. If you can see that where your return line is. So two lines coming together, going to go right back into the return. You've got everything that you need to check your power steering fluid. Um, so that there is going to just about complete it on the power steering. Next thing we're going to do is we're working on the hooking up the radiator hoses to the engine. So this is the uh, the lower radiator hose connection on this 4BT. Um, it's here and as you can see the uh, that's the lower radiator hose connection on the radiator. Uh, what I've got to do is that's two different sizes. That looks like maybe an inch and a half. This here looks like it's uh, maybe two and a quarter two and a quarter inches, something like that. Um, we're going to try to adapt that down. So what I did is I went ahead and put this in the vise. There's a couple of pipe plugs in this uh, lower unit. You got one here and also one right here on the other side. I went ahead and took these out because I might be using these for maybe a sensor. Um, and I use a, uh, a torch to get that nice and hot to get those out of there. So next project is going to be putting this in here like so just like so um, this is a king nipple I believe this is an inch and a half or inch and a quarter what we're going to do we're going to stick that in there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brazen rod and I'm going to go around here and braze this in and uh, by doing that it's going to get me the size that I need for hooking up the radiator hose to the radiator. So we're going to go ahead and uh, heat this up and, and get this brazed in here. What works out good is this uh, king nipple, the size of that actually will thread into that. As you turn that in there, it'll actually screw into that and get it extra nice and uh, tight. All right, so what I'm doing this evening is I'm uh, making my <coughs> turbo oil supply line. I've been checking around town. can't find anybody that actually makes a uh, actual, it's a stainless steel uh, covered line that has rubber on the inside. So I went ahead and decided to go ahead and try to make my own. So what I've got here is I went to Napa, picked up a 3.8 transmission oil cooler hose. And this has 400 PSI. Um, the typical engine probably on cold startups probably going to be around, I don't know, around 70 or 80, probably maximum. Um, so I went ahead and got this, and um, this should work fine. Now, with the fittings, this is the oil supply line. This screws in on top of the turbo. As you can see, it's a flared fitting. Um, there's an O-ring on the bottom side. This screws in on the top of the turbo. And then this is the broken one that come off. This was a stain, um, steel line that threaded in. It gets screwed in there like this. It should look like this. Basically, the an elbow coming in, screws into the top of turbo, and then also right below the oil filter, there's another one that screws in, and then a line in between. So what I'm doing is I have took a uh, brake line. This is a 3 8 uh, brake line has the exact same fittings. Um, got a uh, tubing bender and I just basically put a bend in it. Um, when you do bend this it does want to kind of flatten out on the bottom. Just put it in the vise and squeeze together right here and it'll bring it back to normal shape or real close to it. Now what I'm doing is I've got it in my flaring tool and I'm just going to go ahead and flare the end just a little bit then that way when I stick my hose on there, I don't have to worry about it slipping off of there. Now, with the hose clamps, I'm not using standard hose clamps. 
Knapp also sold these high pressure hose clamps. They're 3 8 inch as well. I'm going to put two on each end to hose that, hold that hose on there. And it should be good to go. I um, pretty much got all this for less than 20 bucks. So I thought I'd let you see it. Here's the brake line. I went ahead and put the flare on this side. As you can see, um, it's got a nice little flare. This side here does not. Um, going to put one on that side. That way when you slip that hose on there and put your hose clamps, at least it has something to kind of grab against.